Welcome to the recorded version of Networking Your Way to a Job, Building Meaningful Relationships. In this recorded workshop, we'll go over all of the do's and don'ts of networking so that you can be confident at your next networking event uh, so that you can build those meaningful relationships to land your next opportunity. By the end of this workshop, you'll be able to explain what networking is and why it's important. You'll be able to identify the people in your network and where else you can engage in networking to build new contacts and connections. Understand the process of initiating professional relationships and how to maintain those connections after you've established them. At the bottom, we have our career readiness competencies. We'll go over those um, more broadly in the next slide. The ones associated with networking are professionalism. With professionalism and networking, you are presenting yourself in a way um, that allows you to translate your experiences and your awareness of your personal work ethic. Next is communication. So network is really all about communicating with others and building relationships with them, um, with people who have the same interests or experiences or people who have the experience that you want to have, uh, or even people that have differing interests and experiences. So communication and active listening are really key to engage in successful networking during and far beyond the initial meeting. Lastly, we have career and self-development. Um, this has to do with taking control of your outcomes. Um, with networking, you are leveraging others and the relationships that you have with them in order to manage your career outcomes and be proactive in that sense. Here we have our full list of the NACE Career Readiness Competencies. So NACE stands for National Association of Colleges and Employers. Numerous college career centers and employers are members of this organization, and they have come together to agree upon this set of competencies that they believe broadly prepare college graduates for a successful transition into the workplace. And the great thing about these competencies is that you can acquire them in so many different ways and settings. Um, so we hope that, um, you know, continuing to engage in our services, getting involved on campus or off campus, um, you will start developing these different competencies um, so that you can make that successful transition into the workplace upon graduation. Here we have this quote by the very wise Bill Nye, everyone you will ever meet knows something that you don't. I think this is something that's really important to keep in mind when you're networking, um, especially if you're new to networking, maybe you don't really see the value in it. I think this puts it into perspective. Um, everyone that you will ever meet will have some kind of knowledge or information or valuable experience that they can impart to you. And conversely, you also have some knowledge or experience that is unique to you that you can impart to others as well. And I think that through networking, that exchange of information can be facilitated. So before we get into the content of our presentation, I want you to take a moment to think about networking and how you would define it then you can um, unpause and continue with the rest of the presentation and I'll explain what networking is and how to um, engage in effective networking practices. So networking really is just a fancy word for building meaningful relationships, which is the tagline of this um, of this workshop, building meaningful relationships. Networking, as we see here, is a development and maintenance of mutually valuable relationships. And whether you know it or not, you do or you engage in networking every single day, 
when you're talking with peers about you know their career goals or their major and why they chose their major you're involved in networking when you are in office hours with a professor and you're asking them about their career path that's networking so beyond that there are so many other examples of networking that you might do in your life um, maybe when you meet with a group of friends and you're asking everyone what is it that they do or what are they studying that's networking it's really just a fancy word for building meaningful relationships honestly and it's unfortunate because i feel like the word networking can make a lot of individuals freeze up and get intimidated um, but if you focus on what is the core of this concept which is building meaningful relationships it demystifies it and um, also makes it more welcoming and accessible um, so when you go to a networking event it's really just talking to people um, and you do that all the time now there are certain things that um, you should know before going into a networking event um, and we can definitely go over those um, throughout the rest of the presentation or if you have specific questions we can go over those um, potentially in an appointment you could meet with your career specialist um, but it's very likely that you have the tools that you need to engage in effective networking. You might just need um, more awareness of these things that you're already doing and maybe additional tips to push things even further. Here we have some common misconceptions of networking. Um, so it only takes place at networking events. Shy people are poor at networking. You only need it if you're going into business. If you have a high GPA, you don't need to network and you only have to gain relationships with people in my field of interest. So networking can be beneficial to anyone in any field with any knowledge or experience level. You're like that first quote that we just went over a couple slides ago. There's always going to be something that you can learn from others um, and Networking allows you to be open to knowledge and experiences and perspective from other individuals. When it comes to um, networking for shy and or introverted people, um, there's definitely strategies that you can use to make networking work for you. And I think that goes for anyone really. Um, some people might prefer some modes of networking as opposed to others and there's a wide variety of ways of um, networking so find the ones that work best for you and um, use those to get to know new people and um, learn new things about your field and um, establish those relationships that will make your professional life more fruitful in terms of having to gain relationships with only your field um, a lot of times you'll find that different fields will interact with each other to uh, accomplish certain projects in a professional setting so i would say that you should gain relationships with anyone that has similar goals as you whether or not they are in the same professional setting or professional field um, and people can have people can accomplish a wide variety of goals um, in a wide variety of different ways the truths about networking is that they're about developing meaningful relationships 70% of jobs and opportunities are found through mutual relationships networking starts before you need a job it isn't always about knowing the rich and powerful and it isn't just about what you know when and where to network so as i mentioned a few slides ago you can network with almost anyone so you can utilize your social networks your friends family neighbors 
alumni, professors, faculty and staff, people that you know from volunteering, and your social networks on social media. Additionally, you can use professional networks such as UC Riverside events or career fairs, job discovery panels, workshops, professional networking events, um, different organizations, uh, involvement in the community itself, and through the County of Riverside, they have various opportunities such as volunteer and internships. So these are all places and there are probably even more that we're not aware of on these slides where you can network with others to gain more information and um, exchange ideas and um, start building relationships. So here we have three questions that you should think about before you network. I would encourage you to pause on this slide and take some time to write these things down. I think that reflecting on these is really beneficial before going into any networking situation. So what are you known for today? So these can be strengths, skills, and experiences. What do you want to be known for? Um, it can be your reputation, your personal branding, credibility, among other things. And how do you get there? So how do you get from where you are now to where you want to be and develop some short and long term goals using you can use the SMART goals um, method or you can use other methods of setting goals as well. Once you've done the reflection on the previous slide, it will make the steps listed here uh, for when you're attending a networking event a little bit easier. Um, I think especially when it comes to setting goals, I think that um, doing the reflection on the previous slide will help you kind of um, focus your intentions a little bit more and then that will help you develop a solid and relevant 30 second pitch, which you can then practice and become more comfortable with. And if you don't know how to make a 30 second pitch, please refer to our workshop on how to work a career fair room or how to make a good first impression at a career fair. And of course, when networking, you want to meet new people and introduce others as well. Um, so other people might introduce you at a networking event. So it is just common courtesy to keep that going. And if you know people that other people want to meet, then introduce them as well. Uh, listen for opportunities to ask questions. So um, I think when I'm meeting new people and when it comes to networking, I kind of um, sometimes I get stuck in the trap of listening to respond as well instead of listening to understand. Um, and I think that when you listen to understand what the person is saying, as opposed to listening to respond, maybe and put something that you know, like a comment or a question. I think that listening to really understand what is at the heart of the, what the other person is saying is easier for developing really relevant and tailored questions to the conversation. And after um, attending a networking event, you should follow up with all of the people that you connected with. But before that, while you're at the networking event, make sure that you're getting business cards or any information that you'll need in order to conduct this follow up. Here are some sample questions for networking. Uh, some professional, some are a little bit more personal, but are still um, appropriate to be, uh, to be asking at a networking event. So these are all really great ideas um, and when you get into informational interviews, uh, we have a handout for that as well on our website under online workshops and resources on the handouts tab. You can refer to those and some of those might even apply for networking events as well. So now uh, it's time to practice and for those of you watching this workshop um, on your own time, it might not be possible to do this right now but um, I hope that you will keep this in mind. And next time you meet a new peer, virtually or in person, um, pitch yourself and take turns um, asking the other person questions like, what is your major? 
How did you choose it? What are your plans after graduation? What do you do for fun? Or maybe some of the other questions on the previous slide if they're applicable. And after conducting this practice, if um, you happen to be in class and you're watching this with the rest of your peers, or if um, you're doing this on your own time, keep in mind some of these questions. So what are some things that worked? What didn't work? How did you feel? And what did you learn? Now we're going to talk about networking in a virtual sense. So these are all different social media platforms and you're engaging in networking, believe it or not, in all of these platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or not. Uh, for some reason, LinkedIn just kind of comes with a little bit more intimidation for some reason. It makes people more nervous, but really we're engaging in networking and building relationships with people on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram too. So why is it that LinkedIn is more nerve wracking? So building relationships via LinkedIn, I'm hoping that this slide will help you kind of break down a little bit more um, what that looks like and make it a little bit more manageable for you. So some things that you can utilize LinkedIn for are researching UCR alumni and fields and occupations that you're interested in. Once you find an alumni with a job title that kind of piques your interest, scroll through their profile and see based on the experiences and skills that they have, um, see if it's somebody that you want to talk to and learn more from. Then try to connect with them and always send a personalized note with your invitation to connect, especially if it's someone that you've never met with or engaged with before. Um, that way it'll increase the chances of them accepting your invitation. And an example of that is on the right. So here we have a sample. It says, hi, Julia, my name is Alex Highlander. I am in my senior year at UCR as a history major. Your career as a nonprofit professional is inspiring, and I would love to connect with you to learn more about what you do and how you achieved all that you have. Thank you for the opportunity to be a connection on LinkedIn. So it's really short and to the point, and on LinkedIn, it only gives you a 300 character limit, which is really short, but honestly, you don't really need all that much. Um, in this sample, we have the person's name, how they're connected to the person. So they have UCR and perhaps the major of history in common with the professional they're reaching out to. And then they're clarifying their intent. So this person reached out because they thought that Julia's career as a nonprofit professional was inspiring and they wanted to learn more about how they got to where they are now. And they also thank them for the opportunity to be a connection beforehand. So once you make this initial um, connection with the individual um, and they accept, then I would consider asking the professional for an informational interview. Um, so start with a small ask first, so maybe like 10 minutes of their time and it can be you know, over the phone or virtually if possible. Um, start with small asks because you're more likely to get buy-in from the professional and that'll make it easier to just get something to start off with and then start building the relationship from there. And honestly, the worst thing that could happen is nothing. They're not going to shame you for reaching out to them or um, berate you or anything. And honestly, the people who do um, reach out and message you back are really nice. So um, don't be intimidated about reaching out to people on LinkedIn. It's really not as intimidating as we make it seem and it gets easier with practice really. So these are all examples of what not to write in your first, um, maybe the invitation to connect with people on LinkedIn or some of the first messages back and forth that you're sending to them. Do not ask them, can you help me? Can you refer me to this job? I would like to connect with you on LinkedIn. The last one is pretty, um, it's implied already. You're sending them the connection, um, invitation to connect with them on LinkedIn. 
And the first two are a little bit, um, I mean, where whether or not your intention is to get a job opportunity, you kind of have to go about it with more tact. Um, and so reaching out to a professional to learn more about what it is that they do and more about the company that they work at, if it's a company you really want to work at one day, um, it's better to start with those questions and um, get to know the individual and the company, um, especially if they're working at the company right now, um, that person could eventually give information to a hiring manager for a job that you apply for in the future. And um, your interaction with them, the impression that you give that person might be something that, um, you know, could be mentioned in a, um, in a future discussion on um, a hiring committee. Common mistakes and bad networking habits. So uh, here's just a list of things that are not such good uh, networking habits. Um, so just be aware of these things and um, try to break away from them. I know some of them are a little bit more difficult and might be related to a certain comfort level. Um, but I think that being aware of things like maybe hanging out with the same person or staying in clicks, staying by the food table bar for too long, not engaging in full conversations, failing to make eye contact, um, you know, those are, all might be things because we're uncomfortable in the situation. Um, some of the other ones I think might just be, you know, an awareness of our body language, how we communicate with others and um, maybe just not being aware of the etiquette, so make sure to follow up as well. And just forget, um, don't forget to have fun. Um, it's about building relationships, remember? So I think if you keep that in mind and also keeping in mind that there's something that you can learn from, from every single person in that room, whether or not you talk to all of them, um, probably it, it might not be possible to talk to all of them. But um, yeah, don't forget that that's really at the heart of networking. So you started the conversation, now what? After starting that initial conversation, by the time you end it, make sure you get some kind of contact information. So phone, um, probably email or LinkedIn would be best. Um, doing so, you can follow up with that person, give them periodic updates on how you're doing, ask them how they're doing as well. Remember, it's about a give and take when it comes to networking. You're giving them information and sharing something about yourself, and likewise, you want to receive information and, um, you know, probe the other person as well. Um, other things that you can think about doing is, especially if you're in the same field as another person, or maybe if you um, found some kind of common interest when you first met with them, if you find an article that, you know, reminds you of that person, feel free to share it with them via email or LinkedIn. So those are just some ideas of how you can um, maintain those relationships and feel free to think of other ways um, and if you want to discuss more about how to maintain relationships after initiating them feel free to schedule a drop-in or appointment with us and we'd be happy to, dis to discuss with you further. So here we have another activity that I hope that you will take some time um, to pause this slide and um, think about maybe write out a sample email introduction. So the prompt is your professor has given you the name and an email address for a UCR alum working in the field of your dreams. What is the appropriate way to introduce yourself via email? So take some time to think about it and maybe write a draft before going to the next slide and see an example. So here we have two examples of how two fictional people have responded to the email prompt. So in the first one, 
we have, hi Clara, it would be really cool to meet you and learn about your career path. It would be really nice if I can get 15 to 20 minutes of your time. Well, looking forward to your reply. Then the other example says, dear Dr. Lee, I am a junior majoring in history at the University of California, Riverside. Professor Addison suggested I get in touch with you regarding my interest in the preservation of local historical districts. Although I'm not currently looking for a job, I am very interested in learning all that I can about typical career paths in this field and what skills I might need to develop. I would greatly appreciate 20 to 30 minutes of your time to ask you questions about your current position and the challenges regards involved. Thank you for your consideration. I look forward to contacting you to arrange a time. So what's the difference between these two examples? I encourage you to take some time, pause this video, and see if you can identify some of the differences, what works in one example, what works in another, um, what doesn't work in either examples. So take this time to um, think about that and then um, press play when you're ready to hear some of the feedback. So the first example is very casual and uh, very vague as well. It doesn't even mention the professor that referred um, the individual to connecting with um, the professional in question. And it doesn't mention like any kind of intent of um, you know why they wanna reach out to them um, other than it would be really cool to meet you and learn about your career path. Well, why would it be really cool to meet and learn about their career path like what why is that important to Ali who is reaching out in the other example so it does mention the professor that provided the contact and it also um, mentions some of the interests and goals that the that Allison has um, for initiating this contact in the first place one thing that both examples do uh, really well is that they ask for a specific amount of time um, of the professional, so 15 to 20 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes. Um, sometimes I think that when you don't specify the amount of time that you're asking of a professional, they assume that it's going to take a lot of time. So I would recommend um, specifying, so 15 to 30 minutes, some kind of um, just give them a number estimate. Um, I think they'd be more likely to respond if you give them a um, concrete number. Lastly, the signature for both of them are very different. So um, Ali in the first example doesn't even mention what school um, they attend and it doesn't provide any contact information. Um, I mean, the professional could easily just reply to the email, though um, I'm not sure if based on this email they would reply, but um, it doesn't give the option for a phone number if they prefer to call. So now we're going into the final touches. So follow up and maintain the relationship after meeting with someone, whether it's at a networking event, an informational interview, send a follow up. Uh, thank you know it can be, um, if you can send it through the mail, that would be awesome. Uh, but doing it over email or LinkedIn uh, would also be uh, appropriate. Send progress emails to let them know how you're doing, any significant updates in your career. Send them related articles based on your conversations with them that you think might be of interest. It shows that you take care and consideration and you're really listening to them when they were speaking to you. If um, ask about professional development or programming or let them know about any professional development or programming that you've been a part of as well as um, community involvement. And holidays are always a great time to uh, reconnect with people that you haven't in a while. So if you're into sending holiday uh, greeting cards or if you see on LinkedIn that maybe they um, celebrated a 
I don't know, 10 years at their job or maybe they got a promotion, send a um, congratulations um, message or comment on their LinkedIn status update. Lastly, I wanted to talk to you about the UCR Career Network, which is an online community for networking, mentoring, and job opportunities for alumni and students. It functions very similarly to LinkedIn. Um, some of the differences are you have to opt in to be part of this network, whereas on LinkedIn, if you put that you went to UCR um, or graduated from UCR, you're automatically pulled into the alumni network on there. So the people who are on here are here because they want to connect with other people, whether it's alum or current students. So I highly recommend that you take advantage of um, this platform so that you can connect um, with people who are working in the field that you're interested in, maybe get leads for um, a job or internship search and get some advice there. Um, another unique feature to the UCR Career Network is that you don't have to take it off of the Career Network um, in order to connect with other people. There is um, video conferencing call capabilities built into the platform. Uh, if you're interested in um, being part of the UCR Career Network, you can register at careernetwork.ucr.edu. So that is it for this presentation, and it really just covers the surface of networking. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to email us um, or schedule an appointment with your career specialist on Handshake. We have our contact information on the next slide, so you can use whatever method works best for you um, to get additional support that you might need.